I just got home from London, which was incredible, but did not accomplish anything reading wise while I was there. Let me just tell you what the current goings on are. Please hold. I started the sequel to these woven, this, this woven kingdom. It ended with a cliffhanger and I was so excited to keep reading. And I know if I don't read it now, I'm gonna forget what happened and I'm never gonna wanna read it. Unfortunately, I have been unable to stop playing Skyrim and I can't see because I'm using the flash, but my game just froze. So I think it's time to go read instead of play Skyrim. Okay, we're back. Hi girls and gays and gay girls. These vlogs are just a fucking mess because there's no beginning, middle, or end. It's just when I feel like talking, I'll be here. So I can't tell you if this is the beginning of a vlog, the end of a vlog, if it's gonna appear in a vlog. We're on our way back to normality. I will do a story time, but I guarantee you editing Whitney's gonna cut this out. If not, here's a little treat. I sent my vlogging camera in for repairs because the screen broke. I was still able to use it, but it was just annoying because I could like barely see myself. They told me after weeks we don't repair your camera, so you either have to buy a refurbished one or we'll send this back to you. I said, work, I'll take it back for free, please. Because it still worked. I was just like, I just wanted a new screen. I thought it'd be like 60 bucks, but guess not. So they send it back and I open the box. <laughs> and tell me why the screen is completely detached from the camera body with the little tape 
connecting them ripped. So now I'm in this whole conversation with them about getting a replacement and long story short, I thought that I would not have a camera for like two weeks and now it's been like three months. So it's hard to want to vlog on my phone because I hate editing phone clips. The audio is terrible. To make up for it, I have a reading update and a book haul. And Gordo is currently on the book haul, keeping it nice and warm for me. So the reading update, whoever sent this to me, I'm obsessed with you and I love this so much. A couple of months ago, I read this, which is the first book in Tahamafi's new like Persian inspired fantasy series. I put off reading this, as you can tell from it being a paperback. I put off reading it, I knew I wasn't gonna love it as much as Shatter Me. I kind of waited for reviews to come in and the reviews were lukewarm at best. And I totally see why. I mean, I enjoyed it. I tabbed it. It was just really slow. And it ended in a way that I was like, this sequel is gonna slap. There's no way this isn't gonna be good. Like it's gonna go forward in such a cool way. And maybe I jinxed it. Cause I am on page 218. Is it an improvement over book one? Which I already gave three stars, like it was fine. Yeah, my problem with these books, which sucks to say, but a big portion of it is the writing. The characters in this series talk like they're in Victorian England. Instead of just being like, stop, they'll be like, cease your inherent casting. Like sentences that could have been a four word sentence become a two paragraph sentence. And so whenever there's witty banter between the characters, it feels so overcomplicated. And the writing of this also reminds me a lot of the later three books in the Shatter Me series, just because there's so much internal monologue happening and no actual action. Her latest books have been a lot of like internal thinking about things, knowing you need to do something, but going back and forth about the pros and cons, and then nothing happens. There's been like three things that happen in this and I'm 200 pages in, and that's exactly what happened with this one. Also, I thought there'd be a love triangle. In the book one, I was like, I hate the main dude. Like, I hope she gets with this next dude that she's going with in book two, but now they both suck. I'm like, the first one is boring and annoying, and now the the second guy, I don't understand him at all, so it just makes me exasperated with him. I mean, the thing you gotta root for in Tahadamafi books is the main character, and I do love Eliza. She is that perfect balance of like meek and wanting to stay out of everybody's lane and just do her own thing and put positivity and good into the world. And then she has some circumstances thrust upon her where she is like instrumental and politics and world drama and she's still having to remain steadfast to like being a good person. I love that idea. And the only other thing keeping me from really loving this is I just found out there's gonna be a third book but it's not the final book. It's gonna be like five or six books. Oh! What the fuck? I am too old to be reading series because I don't remember shit. I read this book like a month ago and I already cannot remember. That's another thing. I can't remember anything from the first book and I'm really confused about a lot of the plot points, but where have all the women gone who do like scene by scene recaps of books? There was not one on this book. So I'm just here confused. I'm gonna have to wait another year before the sequel and then more years after that for more sequels. I, it's just not gonna happen. In addition to what I'm currently reading, I have a library haul. Nice. One of these is from my good friend Shelby. She asked if I wanted this a while ago. We both finally remembered. But she was getting rid of her copy of The Lost Causes of Bleak Creek, which is Rhett and Link's Mystery. They're the hosts of Good Mythical Morning, which I'm obsessed with and I watch like every day. I know this book is not gonna be good. This is basically just self-insert, possibly, if not most likely ghost written. I kind of just want to give this one a go. So when she offered it for free, I was like, yes. And then I went to the library to pick up a hold. This has been on my TBR since like 2019 and now I'm seeing it do the rounds on Twitter. So I don't know what TikToker has been pushing this book lately, but it is, this is how you lose the time war. This just sounded interesting to me a couple of years ago when I put it on my TBR because people were like, it's a really good love story. It's time travel. And I was like, okay, I'll check it out. I think I read like the first chapter one time when I had it out from the library and I was so confused. And recently, Riley Marie, who's like the only booktuber I watch anymore, 
has been bringing this book up again and talking about how difficult it is to understand and she almost dnf'd it but you have to stick through it that is a very brave concept for me because if i'm not loving something immediately i guarantee i'm probably not going to push my way through it but i'm gonna give it a shot it's not even 200 pages i would be a silly little silly goose if i didn't at least try so i'm gonna give that another shot and then while i was there i always just look at the new releases or like the things they have in the front that they're currently promoting i saw this which i've been seeing around a lot this is how high we go in the dark by sequoia nagamatsu it's a debut that follows a cast of intricately linked characters over a hundred years as they recover from the aftermath of a climate plague it's a journey spanning continents centuries and even celestial bodies to tell a story about the resilience of the human spirit and the connective thread that ties us all together in the universe it gives me like matt haig vibes of like positive fiction that makes you think about humanity that's like every book ever i don't know what i'm saying i've heard nothing but amazing things about this and i was like while i'm reading while i'm getting books that make me look like a well-read traveler well, let me just tack this on i don't know what time i'm gonna find to read that because i apparently don't read is what i'm learning about myself i've read like 20 books this year i know this clip is way too long but can we talk about that it is sunday the 14th what month may in high school i would read like a hundred books a year i have nothing else to talk about so here's my cat tell him he's handsome tell him 12 o'clock midnight so i did in fact accidentally just finish the book oh my god it's 1 a.m i didn't mean to do that i read it in one sitting i will in fact be giving you the full review from my bed so i hope you enjoy i think she's gonna end up getting four stars probably rounded down to 3.5 not much more to add from my previous review other than this book is dual perspective between the main girl and the guy from book one i couldn't care less about the other guy's chapters. I only wanted to read chapters about Eliza. The second half was definitely a lot quicker than the first half. There was a lot more like emotional angst and they were finally like digging and getting to the real meat of the action rather than just like surface level banter. There still wasn't a ton that happened in this book though and it ended in a really weird way. It just felt like such a filler middle book. Like let's be honest this probably could be a trilogy but I'm so confused because I don't understand like why it's so insta-lovey and the characters motivations are so wishy-washy and for a series about a girl who's like the lost queen of her kingdom like none of the action is about that it feels like it's about the men solving their problems and like Eliza is just in the back seat like learning how to be a person who isn't being shit on all the time because finally she's like stepping into her power supposedly so like i enjoyed it but i'm very confused at the format of it and i guarantee by the time the third one comes out next year i'm gonna forget every single thing i just read and i'm gonna have a hard time reading it because no one has recapped these <laughs> okay that's that three and a half stars anywho i think it's time uh, page one uh, uh. For the life of me, can I have one aesthetic reading vlog clip? What? I guess reading update while I'm being unaesthetic. I am 67 pages into This Is How You Lose The Time War. And I am giving it my best shot. I'm almost halfway through. Do I understand a single thing? Okay, yes, I understand a couple of things. The rest of it I'm not getting. <laughs> I'm so happy I knew this was going to be confusing going into it because I think if I had tried to read it blindly, I would have been like, fuck this. But it's about these two people. Their job is to like time travel and undo historical events or something like that. They work for opposing companies and they're not supposed to communicate or like talk to each other. 
but as they go throughout time and history to do whatever tasks they're given, I don't understand why they're there. They like leave each other like notes like carved into trees or stirred in a glass of tea. And it starts out like kind of prickly like that, but now they're just being curious and asking about the other. I mean, I'm literally reading this just to get to a point where I understand it. There's not really a plot, and if there is, I have no idea what we're doing here. Because it's like little vignettes of here's a different time they're in, here's a different time they're in. And it spans across galaxies. So 90% of what they talk about is things that I have no idea what they're referring to. I'm scared I'm going to be suspending my, it's going to get good, it's going to get good until the end. And then... I realized after I finished it that it wasn't that good and I just kept waiting and waiting and waiting and I never fully understood it. If I was skinny, this would be viral, but because I'm fat, I might just, this might be crazy. But I have to show you my favorite drink, any drinks that I make. ASMR. So you take a can of diet, pe diet pepper. Recycle this. I got this recipe kind of inspired by Bahama books. It was like a tropical Dr. Pee Pee. I was like, yeah. What you want is some kind of sweet cream. You add a little bit of sweet cream, just a little touch. And here's what really makes the cookie crumble. Coconut syrup. I do like a pump and a half. You stir it around. You decide you need ice in your cup. And you test it for poison. Mm. Whoever decided this needs a swift kiss on the lips. Anyway, my, don't look at my kitchen mess or my bag of chips. I'm currently editing vlogs from April, so work day is over, but not for me because I'm about to hustle and get some YouTube videos out of here. So I just finished this. Mm, don't think it was worth staying up until 1 a.m. to finish, but also I probably didn't want to go a third day reading it. I had suspected that I was just going to spend this entire book waiting for it to get good. Even by the time I was halfway through, I was like, I don't see this doing a 180 because I feel like we're too far in now for this to make any significant changes or start revealing information in a useful way. God, how do I even talk about this? Um, I mean, first and foremost, it was like on the cover, it says sci-fi, which I took with a grain of salt because I was like, eh, I don't think so. And it is really sci-fi and I hate sci-fi. <laughs> By the end of this book, I still don't understand why. I fully admit I'm too stupid for this book. I'm going to be scrolling past everyone's five-star Goodreads reviews to go and leave my little pee-pee-poo-poo two-star review because I'm just confused. And that's the thing. I hate a book that makes me feel stupid. And when I tell you I tried, I was enjoying this book. Like some of the writing, I could tell it was beautiful. But when I was just like really into it and reading it, I would go over it too fast. So I would reread passages to like let it sink in and try and understand better. And even then, I like don't understand their chemistry or their back story or why they were enemies. I think it would help me to go back and reread the first half of this like knowing what you know at the end but I honestly kind of don't care to. It's a weird conundrum of I'm happy it was only 200 pages but it probably needed to have been more for me to be more invested in it. I can see how this is a pretty book about like love spanning through ages and you know as someone who is an invisible string 
stan. Like, I get that a little bit. I just read, this has to be a different copy than the one that everyone else is reading because I am so confused, both about the book itself and what people love about this. And I'm so disappointed because I feel like this happens all the time where something is so beloved and I'm like, I didn't like it. The joke I made to Bonnie earlier is that this book was blurbed by Madeline Miller and I was like, yeah, well not all of us have PhDs. You have to have a brain cell and a half to get this. So I am so happy for the girlies who love this, but I just gotta get back to reading my monster porn because this was too much for me. I'm proud that I read it and I'm not upset that it happened. I'm just so confused and I really put in the effort to try and not be confused and I'm still confused. So someone please tell me I'm not alone. <laughs>